Well, greetings and good morning and welcome to today's Women's Final Four Head Coach Media Availability. I'm Rick Nixon with the NCAA and thanks for being with us for the next 30 minutes. You'll have the opportunity to visit with the head coach of the North Carolina State Wolfpack, Wes Moore. North Carolina State is appearing in its second Women's Final Four and comes into Cleveland with a record of 31 and 6. In a moment, I'll ask uh, Coach Moore to provide an opening statement, and then we'll go to your questions and answers. Uh, just a reminder to raise your hands for any questions, and then uh, we are recording this session, but an ASAP transcript will be available following. Um, so with that, uh, Coach, if you would, a quick opening statement, and then we'll start taking some questions. Yeah, just uh, excited to still be playing. You know, this is an unbelievable uh, experience. Uh been coaching I, this is my 35th year as a head coach and uh what a way to you know what a what a way to peek out here uh just so proud of our team and um all they've been able to overcome and accomplish and uh, a lot of doubters and and they've kept believing and uh it's been a fun ride and I think that's the biggest message I've been giving them and and I think they've felt it too is we just don't want it to end you know we're enjoying the season and having fun together on the court, off the court, and uh, just want to keep it riding. And so we're really excited about coming to Cleveland and and uh, playing again. Thanks, Coach. Um, reminder as well, if you please raise your hand and, and we'll get to those as, as, uh, as we can. So with that, uh, the first question will be from Rob McClabe, McClam. Yeah, Rob McLam, Inside Pack Sports. Wes, uh, as you mentioned, you've been doing this a very long time. Uh, when the realization sits, I have a two-part question. When the realization sets in, okay, I've done it. We, we've done it. We're going to make the Final Four. Describe that feeling, and then how long did it take before you sort of flipped around? Okay, now I'm, i got to get ready for South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what a wake-up call, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, a lot of – uh, I mean, this is your dream as a player, as a coach. This is, you know, every year you start the season with this goal in mind and only four teams make it. And let's face it, a lot of times it's the same three or four teams, but um, it's just um, amazing. I'm so happy for our players to be able to experience this and they've worked so hard. Uh, but a lot of things came to mind. Um you know, two years ago, we were a double overtime uh, loss away from going to the Final Four. And I thought of those players and how much I love them and how great they were. And I just hate that they missed out on this opportunity. I thought about Kay Yao, 34 years at NC State. I was fortunate to be with her from 93 to 95. But, you know, she took this program to a Final Four in 98. And so to, to be able to do that as well. I even thought about you a little bit, Rob. Because uh, you had said uh, recently, I think, that you believe that we would get to the Final Four at some point uh, in my time here. Uh, so I, that's that's amazing. Uh, you maybe had more confidence than I did. But uh, anyway, just a lot of things. But, uh, yeah, it's very humbling, uh, the text messages you receive and from all these great coaches uh, and friends and people you care about, uh, it's it's very humbling and at the same time very exciting. And, yeah, I started watching film actually uh, on the plane ride home, uh, clipped, uh, clipped one of South Carolina's games. Uh, you know, I think this is the best team. And they've had some unbelievable teams. I think this is the best team they've ever had. Uh, simply because I just I think they've got so many people that can score the ball. They got so many really good shooters uh, that you can't, you know, you can't sit down on Cordoza and and collapse on her because they got a lot of people that can knock down threes around her. Even as great a player as she is, you also got to be concerned about the others. So uh, it's a great challenge. Don Staley's been here many times, unbelievable coach. Uh, but like I said, you know, we're excited about playing again and, uh, you know, wouldn't trade it for anything. So here we go. Thanks for the question, Rob. Uh, next, we'll go to Fago Franklin from New Stitched Media. Hey, how you doing? Um, quick uh, question. What does it mean to you to see women's basketball growing in the right direction? Well, I think it's been going in the right direction, but now it's exploding. You know, uh, it's, it's awesome. Uh, got so many unbelievable players. 
uh, that uh, the game has elevated so much and the fan interest obviously has gone with it. Uh, uh, you know, the teams, I think there's more, a little bit more parity than we've had in the past, maybe because of the portal. Uh, but I just think it's a great time. You know, we've uh, we've seen the TV ratings just go through the roof and uh, competing with, you know, the pros and uh, just everyone. So it's it's pretty amazing uh, to be a part of it. And I'm just very thankful and feel like we're uh, blessed. But again, you owe it all to the players. It's all about the product and and uh, you know the entertainment, and those players are are giving us some great entertainment. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Next, we'll go to Corey Smith. Corey Smith with Pack Pride on twenty four seven Sports. Uh, Wes, between you and and the men's team, you guys have a combined nine out of ten starters that are from the transfer portal. Uh, the only one being Isaiah James for you guys. Uh, what has it shown about what you guys have been able to do that you're, you know, able to adapt to uh, this new, you know, look in college basketball and, and and being able to thrive in the transfer portal era as well? Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's uh, it is what it is, and and I'm used to, I've always, uh, I've, I've never really recruited junior college a lot because I love bringing freshmen in and watching them develop you know, over a four year period, watch them grow as a player, uh, as a young lady, uh, just watching them grow up before your eyes is pretty, pretty exciting. And we've got some of that now. We've got uh, several freshmen that are contributing and, and are a big part of it, uh, but no doubt. And I think the big thing is for us, the, the, the young ladies we have that are starting for us out of the transfer portal, they've at least been here multiple years now. And so they've been in the program. They've had a chance to, you know, grow as an individual player and develop. They've also had a chance to come together as a team. I think that's part of our strength right now. And uh, so it, it is what it is. You know, you've got to try to uh, keep up with everyone else and fill spots. And uh, we're just very blessed, you know, that uh, to have so many great players that, and again, at least they've been here two or three years and, have grown and uh, feel, we feel like they've been here the entire time. So don't really look at them as transfer so much now. They're family. This is also the first time we've been able to talk to you since uh, both teams advanced to the the final four. Uh, what does it mean to to be a part of a program that you know the only only the eleventh program in NCAA history to send both teams to the final four? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you know I was fortunate we had. Uh, I had an opportunity to go up to DC. Uh, we had that week off and weren't sure who we were playing or anything. So it was a little bit quieter time. I had an opportunity to go up to the ACC championship game in DC and to share that and to see Coach Keats. He is an unbelievable man. Uh, so good with those players, uh, but also an unbelievable coach. And to see that all come together and uh, start clicking when it counted was was just like I said, one of the most enjoyable things I've ever been a part of to see. And uh, we, you know, it's great. Our players all, I think, get along. They share the same, you know, journey. And so uh, it's been fun uh, watching them interact and, and cheer for each other. And, and then, like I said, Coach Keats and I, I think we have a special bond because we both know how hard this is. You know, starting in the ACC, you've got 14 other unbelievable universities and teams. And here you're trying to be the top one. It's not easy. And uh, so we kind of ups and downs during the season. We try to talk or text, uh, you know, almost every day. And uh, it's just, uh, like I said, it's special to uh, share that with him and to see them doing so well. Thank you so much. Thanks for the questions, Corey. Next, we'll go to James Henderson. Hey, Wes, congratulations. Thank you so much. Go ahead, James. I think we may have lost you there for a second. Hey, you got me now? We, we got you. Okay. Yeah, Wes, I wanted to ask you about the Final Four in general. Obviously, all of these – all four teams have great players, and it seems like the women's game is – you've got so many stars now. Uh, you know, Becker's at UConn, Caitlin Clark, obviously Cardoza at South Carolina. Your two guards, though, can you just discuss the the development you've seen from Sanaya and, and Azaya and what they kind of give you going into this this Final Four? 
Yeah, I've just uh, seen them both grow up, you know, as players, as people. Uh, I think both of them at times, if things didn't go well, they might would be hard on themselves, blame themselves or whatever and get down. I think now uh, maybe just knowing that, you know, they're it, we're really counting on them and, and they're going to be able to play through mistakes and uh, they know we're going to lean on them. Uh, I think that's given them confidence. I know both of them worked their tails off over the summer to grow their games, and and I think that's paid off and has given them confidence as well. But uh, just to see them, like I said, go from, you know, maybe two years ago uh, having some self-doubt and hesitation, and now, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you can't hold them back now. I mean, they've uh, – uh, they've got a lot of confidence and they're having fun and, and that's what it's about. And just to follow up, I know sometimes looking at you on the sidelines, it seems like you can't have them play fast enough. You're yelling, go, go, go. <laughs> is, is that a change for you? Is that, you know, what's it been like watching that? And then when they do get going with their pace, how much can that impact the game? Yeah. You know, we've always been a four out one in and we want to get paint touches uh, and we want to get the ball inside, you know, river ball when I thought really took the game over, uh, against Texas on Sunday in the fourth quarter. I think scored 14 points maybe in that final quarter. So it's great having that balance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Zaya scored, what, 27, I think. So she had 20 and a half, and River had 14 and a quarter. But then I look at the stat sheet afterwards, we still got five people in, in double figures, which is pretty neat. But, yes, with Sanaya and Zaya, you want to go, you want to run, you want to give them an opportunity, maybe in transition to have some one-on-ones and some space to work in. Uh, and then again, we got to be smart enough to realize when, when the defense is back and they clog the lane up, uh, we got to downshift and swing the ball and uh, try to get some movement going. But there are times when I just want to say, Hey, that's, you know, I like this matchup. Let's get everybody out of the way and, and let Sanaya or Zaya go to work. And, and I'd, add, I'd add Zoe Brooks into that mix too. And, you know, she's a very similar type player. And as a freshman, she's grown a lot. So to have uh, all three of them on the court at times, uh, yeah, you better, you better not be touching the break. Uh, let it go. Thanks, Wes. Thanks for the questions. Next we'll go to Tom Withers. Hey coach, Tom Withers, AP Cleveland. Appreciate your time, congratulations. Thank you. you guys have taken down a one and a two and are kind of viewed as a little bit of a party crasher here. Is that, is that okay with you being a little bit under the radar? Hey, we're coming to the rock and roll hall of fame. You got to crash the party, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, again, I look at that gauntlet, uh, Tennessee, Stanford, Texas, uh, that's some pretty, uh, pretty strong programs uh, with a lot of history. So, uh, you know, I noticed, uh, I guess at least the last two games we've, been given like a 20 something percent chance of winning. I think for uh, this game, uh, I don't know if we'll have any percent chance, but uh, <laughs> I know it's going to be pretty low again. Uh, but again, they're just playing and having fun. We're not, not worried about it. And uh, you know, like I said, I, I think uh, this is your goal to get to the final four, but now you got to exhale and say, okay, now our goal is try to go get two more. And uh, so I think we'll, you know, we'll get back on the court a little bit today and, and start refocusing. And, uh, you know, there'll be plenty of time to celebrate later. But, uh, yeah, it's an uh, unbelievable experience. And, um, you know, I can't, I can't wait to get to Cleveland, that's for sure. Hey, and if I could follow up, 40-plus uh, years ago, NC State men took down a, an undefeated team uh, that was looked to be one of the best of all time. Um, will you lean into that a little bit with the girls, Coach? Uh, talk to them about NC State and its history. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I hate to disappoint everyone and probably disappoint <laughs> my players sometimes, you know, I'm not Jim Valvano in that respect. Uh, he, I've heard his players tell me that when he was done speaking to them, they were, they didn't want to open the door. They wanted to run through it. Uh, but I'm, I'm more maybe matter of fact, and, uh, you know, we've, we've just, like I said, we've just bought into the idea. We don't want it to end, you know, we're having fun. And we want to keep going, and and so we'll do that. And we have we have talked about, you know, we're always the underdog. Uh, you know, we were picked eighth in the ACC. We weren't unranked when the season started, and so uh, 
you know, more Rodney Dangerfield. You know, we just don't get any respect, you know. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. We're having fun and uh, we're excited about uh, playing again. And uh, so it's, you know, it's all good. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Just a reminder for all on the call, if you raise your hand, we'll get you an order of, of your hand uh, being put up. So next question, we'll go to Ethan McDowell. Hey, coach, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpack. Um, when you guys got back from Portland, it was almost 3 a.m., but there was still a big crowd of NC State fans there to greet you. What did that moment mean to you, seeing um, yeah. everyone there? It's unbelievable. And and that was the thing. Our fans, you know, they are so uh, rabid. They're so loyal. Uh, and, you know, I, I want to win for them. I'll be honest with you. I mean, that's part of it. Uh, I think we all do. We want uh, we want those those people to have something to celebrate and – and right now they're getting a double dose of celebrating. Uh, I talked to our AD Boo, and he was in Dallas and uh, uh, at the men's game, and he was saying that uh, you know he if if he let him he, he'd be drinking eighty something beers a day because everyone he ran into wanted to buy him a beer, and he had to say no 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 I can't do that. But uh, our fans are really excited, and it's fun. You know they're they're kind of blue collar and hardworking, and uh, we want to be the same way. So. Uh, it means a lot to be able to give them something to celebrate and uh, to to be able to maybe even brag a little bit, you know, nothing wrong with that. Okay, have a good day. Ethan, thanks for the question. Next, we'll go to Dylan Manfrey from Sportico. Hey, Coach. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Congrats on your success. Uh, just curious how NC State is – you know, maximizing it, the name on same recognition with both its men's and women's team uh, in the final four and how you guys plan to, uh, you know, just maximize your brand success there. All right. I'm sorry. Maximizing what? Your, your name recognition. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's exciting too. You know, uh, um, sometimes maybe we don't get the uh, attention over here that we would like uh, nationally. And uh, for us and the men to both be in it, you know, I grew up in Dallas. I listened to the Dallas sports talk all the time to keep up with my world champion, Texas Rangers, and even the Cowboys, even though we've had a dry spell. And I bet three or four different days they've mentioned on, on the Dallas radio about uh, how – our, uh, the Dallas Cowboys need to draft DJ Burns in the seventh round uh, and make a lineman out of him. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely getting a lot of a lot more exposure. Our, I think our players, their talent level, but also their personalities, uh, make it fun and uh, make people really uh, attract to them. And so it's been crazy to see uh, see all the attention and um, you know hopefully that's something. Uh, Coach Keats and I, Coach Doran in football, everybody else, Coach Avin in baseball. Hopefully, we can all take advantage of it uh, in the recruiting as well. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. Um, again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll next, go to Irie Harris. Irie, go ahead. Thank you. Uh Congratulations, Coach Ivory Harris here from Cleveland.com. Just to concentrate on you, just, you know, right quick. Uh, we understand this is the second Final Four appearance in program history, the first one coming in 1998. You were also in the Final Four, but at the Division II level with Francis Marion. Can you just talk about what do you remember much from that event and your personal growth as a coach from that Final Four at that level and your grind all the way to now? Yeah. Uh, first of all, as far as the 98 program, at NC State, I was here uh, 93 to 95. And so those players that were seniors in 98, uh, I actually was here their freshman year and was able to work with them some and, and be around them. And uh, we take a lot of pride in that group. Um, in fact, this year we recognized, I guess maybe a year ago, we recognized them uh, for their anniversary year, 25 years. And uh uh, just it, when they're they're around a lot, uh, it's it's pretty awesome to share that with them because we all feel like even though we're 25 years separated or whatever, we feel like we're all family. 
Francis Marion, it was awesome too. Uh, you know, it's still, I know it's division two, II, division one, uh, but to go to final four at Francis Marion uh, was a thrill as well. And I still talk with some of those players uh, and have a lot of great memories with them. And, uh, you know, I've been very blessed, you know, everywhere I've been, have unbelievable players to work with and un un unbelievable young ladies. A lot of that goes to their parents for preparing them for opportunities like this. But yeah, uh, you know, this was, this, it's been a long time coming for this one. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm proud of those other teams as well. Thanks, Irie. Um, just the last call for any questions. I don't see any in the uh, standby mode. There's one. We'll go back to Rob McClam for a final question. Rob, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, Wes, if you could just obviously you got two more games to go, and you want to you you have work to do. Oh, but we hope. Yeah, you're right. Right. You obviously in your mind you want to play two more games. Yeah. If you could just, I don't want you to get too retrospective, but if you could just say back from the renovation of rentals to now, it seems like there's been like three really tiers of players, the groups, because now you're in your 11th year, just to all the people that have contributed to this moment, if you could speak to them, to the fans, what would you say to them? Yeah. yeah I mean, I think about my first few years and the, and the young ladies we had there, my first year here, uh, expectations were so low, but I felt like we had some talent. I felt like we had some seniors that were hungry. And so that first year, those kids just, you know, and the thing is they hadn't heard any of my stories. They, you know, I hadn't worn on them yet. And so uh, it was just a fun year. We won 25 games and, and went to the tournament and all that. Uh, then we had the group that obviously went to the uh, lead eight a couple of years ago. Those kids, most of those players had been in our program for five years due to COVID. And so they had grown uh, when they came in, they weren't, you know, top 50. Heck, most of them weren't even top 100 recruits. Uh, probably Elisa Kinane was the highest ranked. She was 55th, I believe, in the ESPN rankings. Uh, but they just, you know, they stayed here. First of all, there was no portal then. They stayed here. They worked hard. They got better individually. They got better as a team. And like I said, we went up to Connecticut and double overtime loss uh, away from going to the Final Four. Uh, so I think about that group, as you mentioned, and now this group, and again, you know, some, several of them came from the portal, but they all have been here, you know, multiple years, those ones that are starting and all. And so special group. And, and again, from where we started, uh, even a year ago, the disappointment at the end of the season, a year ago to now is just amazing. And, um, like I said, I'm happy for those players. I'm happy for our fans. And, uh, you know, it's a special time, obviously, uh, memories that uh, will last you a lifetime. Thanks, Rob. And uh, final question this morning will come again from Tom Withers, Associated Press. Thanks for letting me sneak last one in. Um, Coach, I know you've been focused on the game, Cox, but I'm certain that you were probably watching the ball games last night and just wanted to get your impressions on what Caitlin Clark was able to do. I, I hate to admit it, y'all. Uh, I was here watching <laughs> film in the office, and I didn't get home. I, I Actually, my wife had it on when I walked in the door, and I saw the last minute. Uh, but I've seen the highlights. And, you know, I saw her up close uh, and personal last year. You know, we, we were fortunate. We went to Iowa a year ago and won, and we held Caitlin Clark to 45. I mean – uh, I can't believe I didn't have coaches calling me last year for my scouting report <laughs> in the NCAA tournament, you know? Uh, yeah, she is amazing. And uh, people ask me in the post-game press conference after we won, uh, well, do you think Caitlin Clark shot too much? Something to that effect, or maybe took some tough shots. Are you kidding me? If you're hitting over 50% of your shots, I don't care where you shoot, how often you shoot, keep shooting. And she was, she crossed half court. She was open. So she is truly amazing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of amazing players in this final four. And, and like I said, South Carolina is loaded with them too. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's pretty special to be a part of. And yeah, Caitlin Clark is someone that is definitely uh, 
you know, made such a great impact on our game. And I bet ticket prices for the final four uh, doubled <laughs> last night. So uh, if you had some at face value, they might be a lot more valuable. <laughs> so, Thanks coach. Thank you. Well, Coach Moore, we do appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Um, for the media that have been on the call, we'll have a transcript following uh, via ASAP. Um, and, but we do appreciate it, Coach. Safe travels to Cleveland. Thank Look forward you. to seeing you. Thank you all. Can't wait to get there. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.